In today's video, we're going to be taking a massive and in-depth look into Hurricane Ian, which is now either at Category 5 status or almost Category 5 status as it has rapidly developed overnight. Uh, we have basically, according to the National Hurricane Center, 155 miles per hour sustained, uh, and we need 157 to be considered a Category 5. So obviously you would not be able to tell the difference if you were on the ground of 2 miles per hour. So it might as well just be a Category 5. And likely if it's listed as a 155, there's probably 157 in there somewhere as well. So I think it's pretty safe to say that this is a Category 5 and most likely will be listed as a Category 5 uh, within the next update, which comes out in a couple minutes actually. Uh, or no, no, no. The next one I think comes out in a few hours. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at that during the live stream, which by the way, I'm going to be going live right after this video. That link will be in the description and in the co pinned comment down below where you can go ahead and check that out. I'm going to be trying to go live within like 45 minutes of when I'm recording right now. So probably like 9.45 or 10. Uh, as soon as I can get this video ready to upload, I'm going to just switch right over and start streaming. So I'm going to go back to back today. We're taking a look on radar imagery at this hurricane and it just looks crazy, guys. We have tons and tons of activity as expected with a Category 5 or Category 4 hurricane there. Uh, we can see that a lot of these bands also on the east coast of Florida are uh, creating some issues as well. We see a tornado warning coming in south of Palm Bay there. Uh, right along this coast here, we've seen that take place. Uh, actually, there was two of them there. And then we could see the eye wall. So some of these outer walls are already starting to impact the southwest coast of Florida. Uh, so we see uh, Englewood, uh, Cape Cor Coral, I think is how you say it, uh, or Cape Coral, I, I forget how you say that, East Naples as well. Uh, we're seeing all these areas get that kind of outer wall here. It's probably already pretty bad. But unfortunately, there is more on the way here because we have our uh, really inner eye wall here uh, kind of approaching. Now, I think East Naples, you're going to dodge it because it's heading pretty much almost directly north at this point. Uh, but uh, Sarasota, Englewood especially, I think, are going to be uh, some hot spots for direct impact. Cape Coral can't be uh, ruled out either. Uh, definitely all of these areas are going to be feeling more of those direct eye wall um, impacts for sure. Now, let's go ahead and move on and talk about some modeled guidance and some current conditions as far as satellite imagery uh, and intensity as well. Now, we're taking a look here at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. As you can see, Hurricane Ian is obviously right up against Florida. No surprise there with the 8 a.m. update. For some reason, I thought they made 9 a.m. updates, but they obviously make 8 a.m. updates. Uh, we can see that we have a 70% chance of development out there in the middle of our main development region in the Atlantic through the next 48 hours and through the next five days. Uh, this storm uh, likely to develop looks to be on a northern trajectory though out there. So as of now, this does not appear to be a threat, but obviously only time will truly be able to tell. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our satellite image. Now here we are taking a look at things and I think in my opinion, this is only uh, getting worse here. We could see that eye wall redeveloping. It kind of went through a recycling uh, period. And uh, something I want to mention, this is a pretty interesting thing to note, but when you see an eye quite like this one with all what well, looks to be storms in there, uh, you see how the eye isn't completely clean, but there is storms in there kind of and clouds. That is a very, very strong sign of a still intensifying storm. So I want to put that out there. That is a very strong indication that this storm is still uh, developing very rapidly. Uh, we also have this buzzsaw look on the outside. And I mean, uh, this area kind of looks a little buzzsaw-y. I don't, we use that term in the weather community. I don't really know um, if it's the best one ever, but when you get that buzzsaw look with the outer rims of these hurricanes, uh, that, that tends to be another sign of also rapidly intensifying uh, storms. We have very, very tall clouds here already over Florida. It's probably very dark and very, very windy and stormy already. Uh, that eye wall, again, is, a, is an hour or two away. Um, we're going to be talking about that during the live stream, so be sure to tune in there. We're going to be getting the worst of the storm uh, during the stream. Um, so we'll be talking more in depth about the storm, obviously. Now, we're going to take a look at intensity guidance, but it's very, very wrong. And as you can see, this was the guidance at 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. I forget when the 60 comes out this time of year. But um, none of these models called for a Category 5 
One of them rapidly jumps up, and that one's the very closest to being correct. That one was very on point, I would say. The rest had us at a mid-level Category 3, just dropping down to a Category 2 and 1. Instead, we basically went up as much as they thought we'd go down over the past just couple of hours. This guidance is not that old. Um, Very crazy to see how far we've come in just the last few hours, and a very scary thought for sure. Now, we're going to take a look at spaghetti model guidance, but again, there's not really a huge point at this point. Now, here we are taking a look at it, and as you can see, it's on that northern trajectory, but it is going to hit uh, there along the west coast of Florida. It is going to re-enter the southeast very briefly before hitting in between Georgia and South Carolina, very close to Savannah, Georgia, I would say. It's going to do a little loop-de-loop -loop here, so if I was to draw a mean average, we're going to get something like this, and then it looks like they want it to kind of do this. So what this entails, I don't know. Maybe when it re-enters the mid-Atlantic, although it's been very, very cool, the Gulf Stream might be just warm enough uh, to where this storm can start to re-become something offshore of the East Coast. I don't know. That would make this storm even more interesting. But again, that's one of those things that only time would really be able to tell. Now let's start really diving into the National Hurricane Center and their expected impacts and the updates to that at this point. Now here's the five-day graph, or better yet, the the cone forecast, and as you can see, again, maximum sustained winds are at 155 miles per hour, super close to a Category 5, should just be treated as a Category 5 regardless because it practically is, um, and it probably will become one anyway. So just keep all of these things in mind. This storm is a very major storm. Uh, I'm very glad that I was able to kind of let you guys know that I think Category 5 is possible. And hopefully some of you took those words very, very seriously because here we are a couple of days later sitting with an actual Category 5 hurricane slamming into the coast of Florida here. Um, it's very interesting to me that there was people uh, in the comment section of just a few days ago uh, doubting that even a major hurricane making landfall would occur. Uh, and here we are with a Category 4 very close to pushing on five, slamming the coast. Um, very interesting how quickly things can change. Let's go ahead and talk about impacts, though. As far as rainfall, this has gone down because a lot of it has already fallen. So this is just what is still to come. Uh, if you're anywhere in the lighter greens, we expect an inch to two inches. In the darker greens, we expect two to four inches. In the yellows, we expect four to six inches. In the oranges, we expect six to ten inches. In the reds there, we expect ten to fifteen inches of rainfall and then in the uh, kind of pink colors there north of Orlando we expect 15 to 20 inches of rainfall which is just an extraordinary amount of rainfall in my opinion very very crazy stuff I don't even know why I said my opinion because I think that's pretty much everybody's opinion 15 to 20 inches of rainfall is insane to think about let's quickly take a look at the storm surge numbers because these have also increased in a very concerning way now here we are taking a look at it, and unfortunately we now have a forecast for up to 12 to 16 feet of storm surge where we originally had thought that uh, 10 feet would be the maximum, but now between Englewood and Bonita Beach we expect potentially six, 12 to 16 feet of um, storm surge, which is a huge, huge, huge amount. We need to take this very seriously. All the blue areas, it's going to be about one to three feet. The yellows will be three to five feet there for the most part. We see a couple of four to six, a couple of two to four. Um, so we'll call it, we'll call it two to six feet. How about that? Um, in the reds, we expect, it depends where you're at, but north of the purple there in the, in the red, we expect six to 10 feet. And then south there, uh, we expect seven to 11 feet of storm surge there. Uh, very, very crazy scenario we find ourselves in. Um, if you go further south into that orange area there, we expect four to seven feet of storm surge. I want you guys to know this storm has already overperformed as far as storm surge is concerned. And in Key West, I'm hearing that there's over 10 feet of storm surge, uh, way above what was expected for these regions. And that leads me to believe that it could be way above what's expected for other regions as well. So we're going to take everything very, very seriously here. Uh, this is just not a good look whatsoever. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please tune into the live stream. We'll, talk, we'll be talking more in depth about this storm and just covering the, the landfall of that eye wall, hopefully. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there. Be sure to like the video if you did find it interesting or useful. Uh, comment down below with your thoughts and subscribe for daily weather updates. I'll see you guys in the next video.